Are you ready to stop the self-sabotage and create the life you desire? Well, in order for that to happen, you need to break free from the bad beliefs that are holding your success hostage. You need to optimize the stress by turning it into extra energy for success. And those hurtful habits? Well, we need to give that pain a purpose for progress. Welcome to Stop the Self-Sabotage and Create the Life You Desire podcast. So you have a goal that you've been going after, and maybe it's been really challenging, or maybe you actually got part of it, but then it felt like it slipped through your fingers. Why? Why does it seem to be so hard? It's because you do not have agreement from your subconscious mind. Your subconscious is the part of you that runs all of your habits and patterns, and whether it is success or or failure, whether you get it and you move on to the next peak in your progress, or you slip back down into the pit of pain, all of that is based on the habits and patterns found in your subconscious. So let's begin to wrap up the nine laws that we've been covering that govern your success. I'm going to give you a real quick, quick recap. The first one is the coin. And that simply means that everything has two sides. So whatever you focus on is going to show up in your physical environment. But are you focusing on approach or avoidance? We all have approach goals. We all have things we want to avoid, avoidance goals. We also have strategies and tactics that are for those goals, whether it's moving towards something or moving away. You actually need to have a ratio of three to one or even better, five to one approach versus avoidance. Then law number two, rule number two is the target. What are you focused on? What is going to come to fruition? Because if you're focused on, I need to get away from this. I need to get away from this weight. I need to get away from this debt. I need to get away from this broken heart. Those are all avoidance goals, but then it just turns on the powerful part of your mind to find more things in your life that you need to get away from, which means that you're never moving into what it is that you actually want to experience on the physical plane. Then law or rule number three, the winner. Anytime there is a disagreement between your conscious and your subconscious, your executive functioning center and your habits and patterns, your analytics, your creativity, well, it is your subconscious, it is your creativity, it is your habits and patterns that win every single time. So you want to get all of that on your side. Uh, Number four, the nap. Opposing thoughts, emotions, actions, beliefs, experiences cannot be held in the same space. One of them is going to have to go into hiding. One of them is going to have to take a nap. Right now, there is a part of you that's been going after your goals that it's, it's a challenge because this aspect of your identity, of your personality, doesn't have the skill set. It doesn't have the ability to optimize your emotions, and it doesn't have the energy to continue to follow through. It is a younger you that was programmed and conditioned to make life happen, but typically for other people at your expense. This aspect of you cannot come out for your long-term achievement. Now, as I said earlier, that the coin, the law of polarity, says everything's created as a whole. So you have an aspect of you that is uh, your wise woman or wise man. I call it your goddess or your Adonis that knows exactly how to move you forward, but it's still in seed form because it hasn't been placed in the internal environment where it can actually take root and grow. Yeah. So we actually need to put to to rest, to allow 
to replenish and rejuvenate and renew because it's going to go quiet. It's going to go dormant. The part of you that is overperforming for others and allow the aspect of you that can actually move you into achievement in a healthy way for yourself. Allow that to come forward. Oh, for those of you that are on the video with me, Thor is here. <laughs> and he's going, okay, how long are you going to be doing this for? All right. Um, so now we're going to move into the aspects of you, your subconscious, uh, the dance, the pyramid, the feather, and the job description, um, the dance. Every emotion is going to produce its dance partner in you physically. Mm -hmm. uh, now, how does this show up in an unhealthy way? Well, the American Medical Association stated, oh, many, many, many years ago, that over 80% of all disease was given the opportunity to grow because of unmitigated stress, unresolved distress. Yeah. So that, that unhealthy stress, well, showed up with the dance partner with physical symptoms. Most people have heard of post-traumatic stress disorder. Not as many have heard of post-traumatic growth. Same experiences, but a different result. That's when you give the pain a purpose in your life. Hey, I was diagnosed with complex post-traumatic stress disorder. And while I don't diagnose other people, I do create an environment where you can choose what labels you want to give yourself and then choose how you're going to use those labels to move you forward into growth. So know that every emotion is looking for its dance partner. So what purpose are you going to give it? Because that purpose is actually found in your subconscious mind. You know, years ago, in fact, a couple of decades ago, when I was in training to become a certified hypnotherapist, I actually gave myself the suggestion, my powerful subconscious mind, the suggestion that for every suggestion I gave one of my clients, if it would assist me, it would automatically boomerang back. What a great way to move through life. I can be generous with what I offer because it just turns around and assists me to go even higher. All right. So the dance, what are you going to do with those emotions? This is where we look at optimization. The fear is not going to go away. The pain from your past isn't going to leave you. Uh, the fact that you feel overwhelmed. Oh, overwhelmed. Yeah. Emotional flooding still going to show up, but instead of feeling like you're drowning in it, how about if we put you in a sailboat and te teach you how to ride the waves? Mm -hmm. That's what it means to emotionally optimize. Um, now we're moving into number seven, the, the pyramid. And this is that each suggestion that is accepted, makes it easier for the next suggestion. And each suggestion rejected makes it less likely that you'll accept the next suggestion. Have you ever seen somebody upset and then somebody else tries to tell them, calm down? You try to tell me that? Oh, no, it's not going to be nice. I tell you how to calm down. But if I were to see you in distress and upset, I, I could come up to you and go, my gosh, what's going on? And then after I hear a little bit, say, you know what? If that was me, I'd probably be upset too. Now we're in agreement. And it's like, okay, yeah. Wow. What is it that I can do for you? 
Because once they accept the agreement, now there's less opposition of me being able to help them. All right. Uh, Whenever I'm working with a weight reduction client. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, we know that we need to get you moving. I, I don't look at what they're consuming right off the bat. I just look at, we need to to get that body moving because as you've noticed that the subconscious wants to bring everything into the physical realm. So let's, let's work with it in a way that it understands. And I'm like, okay, we need to get you moving. And my clients will typically go, yeah, I know. Uh, So much exercise a day. And I'm like, yeah. How about if we start off with 60 seconds? And they're like, what? Like, yeah, 60 seconds, brisk physical activity. I mean, you could be hoofing it around the dining room table if you want to, 60 seconds for the first week. Why is that? Because then there's going to be less opposition when I ask them to double it to two minutes the second week, and then doubling it again to four minutes on the third week, and then doubling it again to eight minutes on the fourth week, and then doubling it again to where it's 16 minutes on the fifth week, and then not quite doubling it. How about if we move up to 30 minutes six weeks later? And it also all started with 60 seconds. Same way whenever I work with someone utilizing hypnosis and I start them off by saying, take in a nice, easy breath. And as you let go, allow those eyes to close gently. And then after that, take in another soft, gentle breath, holding this one for just a moment and then releasing it. That can lead to some very complex suggestions that they're accepting 20, 30 minutes later, around fear, around self-sabotage, around that broken heart and allowing it to heal and finding all the people, places, and things that are going to support them in their achievement. But that's not where we start. So if you think about a pyramid, this is the reason why it's called the pyramid, uh, uh, the, the type of pyramid where it's levels that look like steps, Well, you've got a really broad base and then you step up and the next level, well, it doesn't have to be as large. And then the next level and then the next level and the next level. This is the reason why you will hear me say reach greater heights of success with less effort, but you have to accept those beginning suggestions. All right. uh, Number eight. The feather. The harder you try to do something consciously by focusing on it, and these are all the steps that I have to take, and uh, well, the less subconscious agreement. And it's your subconscious that runs all of your habits and patterns. So you literally have to turn it into a habit and pattern. You have triggers right now that are causing sabotage. You have to upgrade the meaning. The triggers aren't going to go away. So allow yourself to use them in a way that's going to bring out your benefit instead of going, oh, there's that person. And they typically just really aggravate me and irritate me. Maybe it's a coworker, maybe it's a family member, maybe it's a neighbor. Uh, and it just, oh, maybe it's somebody you see on TV. What if you were to give the suggestions to your subconscious and your subconscious speaks and symbols? By the way, I, t- I teach you how to do all of this for yourself in the upcoming course I have, Health, Wealth, and Happiness Through Self-Hypnosis, where I teach you how to give yourself suggestions in a way where you will actually accept them. And you want to know that the subconscious doesn't use rationalization and analyzation and data. No, it uses symbols and stories and metaphors. So what if you were to have given yourself the suggestions that uh, oysters, 
oyster, I think it's oysters, clams of some sort, whatever it is, that when they get a piece of sand in there, that that grit, ah, well, it's irritating at first, but then you build up a boundary around it. And that boundary, well, turns into a pearl. And those who have been revered through the ages, they have pearls of wisdom. Mm. But then you don't throw your pearls in front of pigs because they'll smash it down. So you only utilize the pearls around those who are going to find benefit in them. Hmm. I wonder how you might be able to take what's been irritating and aggravating and, well, utilize boundaries in a way that it's going to lead to something beautiful, your pearls of wisdom, and then being able to use them around others where it benefits both of you. Because it's interesting what the true meaning of beauty is. It's simply an externalization of inner harmony. That's the reason why we can look at some flowers, such as dandelions, and actually see them as things of beauty because they're in harmony with who they really are. And you know, dandelions can be the first thing that show up in the springtime. And while some people may want to stamp them out, others understand that there's a time for that, but that bees must have those dandelions and what they offer for the bees to be able to take it back to the honeycomb and and be able to, to use it to begin to thrive. And this is the reason why you wouldn't want to stamp them out too early. And and I wonder if there are some things that have shown up in your life that maybe looked like weeds in the beginning, and there's a proper time to take them out. But But you understand that, well, they can be beneficial. They can actually be beautiful. The right place, the right time, the right actions for the right results. Hmm. And all of this eh, started with being a little aggravated and a little irritated. And now it's turning into something that is beautiful through its nurturing and nourishment. All righty. Mm-hmm. Now let's uh, talk about, oh, yeah, so that's the feather. Uh, The reason why it's called the feather is think about a feather floating down and you decide you want to try to catch it. Oh, yes, I want that in my life. And you try grabbing it. Well, what happens? You actually, with the air currents that you're causing by trying to grab it, you push the feather away. But if you put your open hand beneath the feather, you can position your hand to where the feather floats into it. You have to position yourself in such a way that when the subconscious has its focus, its feelings, and its actions, it is actually going to bring the success to you that you've been desiring. All right. And then the last one, the job description. The reason why success can be hard to achieve, and then once you get it, keep it, is because your current identity is incongruent with your goal. I mean, if you're a people pleaser, and you actually start making progress and doing things for yourself, well, that aspect of your identity is going to push it away. Because no, 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 no. 
you were taught to take care of others, but only when you were in a one down and they were in a one up position. Well, that aspect of your identity, it's supposed to be doing something else instead of getting out there, making your goals happen. This is whenever I I teach uh, my, my uh, hypnotists that I'm certifying, I teach it in my self-hypnosis class, uh, the four R's, reveal, release, relearn, rejoice. You reveal the aspect of your personality that is out of harmony with what it is you want to achieve. Then you release it from that contract. You allow it to relearn what it was supposed to do whenever it was programmed for pain. But then you bring out the part of you that does know how to move forward, and then you rejoice. You bring back the past you, you bring into uh, your everyday awareness the future you, and then they act through the present. They bring you all sorts of gifts. That's why it's called the present. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. And so you can allow the different aspects of your personality to work together as a team in order for you to achieve. All right. Those are the nine laws, the the nine rules of achieving success in a way where it actually brings you out at your very best. So guess what? Now it's time for you to reach greater heights of success with less effort. What I'm getting ready to share is not for everybody. But if you are the type of person that has been through some stuff in your life and you want to assist others to where they don't either have to go through it or When they are in it, you want to help them get through to the other side to upgrade as quick as possible. Well, maybe you should marry your passion of helping others with the profit of your own holistic business by becoming a certified hypnotist. Because as a CH, you now have a process and a system that you will be taught that will allow you to showcase your brilliance as well as the BBS that you've been through, bad belief systems. It allows you to showcase that in a way that assists others. And here's the great thing. Every time you give someone a suggestion for them to be their best, it can actually boomerang back to you to where it also helps you. That means the more people that you assist living a high quality life, then it also works for you automatically. Okay. If this sounds like something that you might want to investigate, then go to dawnlandrum.com and click on become a certified hypnotist and see exactly what the program offers you. Besides just the fact that it's virtual, you can attend from anywhere and you can get your certification by two evenings a week for just 12 weeks. Okay. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me 636-699-7791. Or there is a button that will pop up on the CH page that says, am I the right instructor for you? And you can click on it and set a time for us to chat. And if I'm not a fit for you, I'll be able to guide you in who you should be looking for. It is time to give your pain a fuller purpose for progress that goes beyond just you. Let's support those that are looking for you that have a story similar to yours and you can help them add on an additional chapter that's going to be about the success in their life and it was because you were there to support them.